by reading Psalm 133 and we can read it again today on the New Living Translation that says how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony for harmony is, a, is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe Harmony is as refreshing as the dew of Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced His blessing, even life everlasting. This is the title of our series of messages. We're going to continue with one more message. And we're talking about the place where God commands His blessing. I hope that you want to be blessed by God today. Yeah. We came here not only to bless God with our present worship, but we came here also because we know that there's a special blessing prepared for each one of us. When we walk under God's protection, when we walk under God's uh, pronounced blessing, we will see things happening in our lives. Our lives are sometimes very complicated. I don't know about you, but my life complicates once in a while. Someone like me? <laughs> And when life complicates, uh, I often try to solve problems. Some people uh, like to live with problems, I like to solve problems. So we have different kinds of people. And as we come to church, we, we, we need to understand that God wants to solve the problems in our life and help us to overcome all of, of the circumstances and evil circumstances of life. And we can do it in two ways, on our own or with His help. But I trust that because you're here, you also have this desire of walking under God's blessing. And God's blessing is something that is pronounced. A blessing is the impartation of the supernatural power of God into a human life by the spoken word of God's delegated authority. So a blessing is not something in the abstract. It's not when you get a check of $100, that's a blessing. But that's not God's blessing. It's a, it's a particular blessing that we receive. God's blessing is received with words. A blessing in the Bible, uh, it, it comes always by pronounced words. We have the patriarchs pronouncing blessing. 
We, we had uh, Abram blessing his son. And Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the generations, they blessed their children. Even God commanded them to bless their kids. Now, in Israel, they had then an institution of a priesthood, and the special tribe, the Levites, were separated to serve God and just to worship God, but also to pronounce the blessing over God's people. So the office of the priest and the office of the prophet was to bring the oracles of God and pronounce those oracles over God's people. So they will come and gather to worship God, they will bring their sacrifices, and they will receive the blessing. When my children were a little bit younger, they would never go to bed before they, they come to us and say, Dad, I want your blessing. So we train them this way. And uh, at a certain point, they were grown up and grown ups, and uh, we kind of stop it. And I regret stopping this <laughs> good habit. Maybe we need to institute it again in our home. But we had this habit of, of having the kids coming and never going to bed without coming and asking for the blessing. So we'll say, I bless you, son, I bless you, daughter. We'll embrace them, kiss them, and put them to bed. Because it's very important that as parents, we pronounce blessing over our children. If you have a disabled children or a child with difficulties, it's very important that you pronounce blessing. It doesn't matter what the doctor says, it doesn't matter what circumstances say, you can pronounce blessing over that child. Amen. The child doesn't have to live under a curse, but should, uh, should live under a blessing. Now in a church, we also have the pastors, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers and the apostles. We have, there's five gifts of ministry that God gave to the church. We might call them pastors, all of them, but we have different gifts. And as, as people that God anointed to be ahead of the congregation, we're not here just to preach and to do nice sermons. We're here to send blessing over your lives. And we pray blessing over your lives. You know, whenever we need a special financial blessing at the church, you know how we pray? Pray, Lord, bless your children, bless your people. And I hope you're willing to receive financial blessings in your life and be obedient to the Lord. Because as we live in obedience, we can live under God's protection and God's blessing. It is God's will to bless every aspect of your life. And blessing comes from delegating authority. So it's very important that people that believe us in the things of God, that uh, they, they, they are able to send that blessing over our life and bless our families and bless everything we do. Now let's move a little bit further talking about God's blessing. We need to speak blessings aloud, and we can do it over our own um, uh, family, our own body. We can speak these blessings. And once there's a, a blessing spoken by a spiritual authority, you need to be willing to receive that blessing in your life. This is how Jesus operated miracles. Bartimaeus came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus had to pronounce the blessing, and he said, be healed. Jesus pronounced blessings upon request. They were bringing children to Jesus so that he would be able to hold them, touch them, and bless them. And the apostles were saying, don't bother the master, don't bring those children. But Jesus said, don't do that. Let them come. Why? Because it's Jesus' nature to bless. It's God's nature to bless. He wants to bless us. And we need to build uh, an attitude of blessing in, in our own life so we can speak blessing over our circumstances. You know, it, it doesn't matter if, if there's problems, if you've lost your job, if the doctor told you you have a bad disease, it doesn't matter what's happening in your life. We need to build up faith and speak to the mountain and speak blessing and expect blessing in our life. Amen. Give that applause to the Lord. Now, also, whenever we decide to become peacemakers and live in, in harmony with others, there is a powerful promise of blessing. That's what we read in Psalm 133. God says that when we live in unity, the New Living, Living Translation talks about harmony, when we, we live a, a life in which we get along with other people, in which we get along with people that have the same faith as we do, there's a special promise of blessing. God says, I will pronounce blessing in that place. I will pronounce blessing whenever you learn to live in harmony. This uh, Psalm 133 is one of my favorite psalms. 
And I want to uh, give a message with three points today, very traditional way that pastors have to do a message. And number one, I want to tell you we are bar born to win, but some or most of us, I will say, are programmed to fail. This seems like a contradiction, but it's not a contradiction. We are born to win, but with just a few exceptions, we go through trials, tribulations, numerous things that will attack and destroy our faith, our vision, our, our desires, and eventually we'll find ourselves in the place of the feet. Of course, there's a few exceptions. You know those people that doesn't matter what they do, they're always on the top. It doesn't matter what they do, they always have tons of money. It doesn't matter what they do, they might lose the fortune, but they make another one next year. There's people that are programmed, programmed to, to win, but most of us are programmed to fail. And sometimes we find ourselves in a maze of circumstances and we go left and we go right and we arrive to a dead end and we need to go back. How many of you have been in a real maze? <laughs> That's an awesome picture of a, of a maze. And, and certain, certain times in our life, it's how we feel. We get to a dead end and we see there's no exit. And, we go back, and then we get lost and we turn to the left and we turn to the, to the right. And we always strive to get out of that maze. And in this sense, spiritually, many of us Christians are lost in a maze and it turns to the left and to the right and we don't find a way out of that maze. But if we are able, if we were able to see the maze from the top, we could solve the problem. Right? We could get the pencil and draw our exit out of the maze. Correct? Yes. Because when we're in the level of the maze, we just see the walls. We just see uh, in 2D. We can only go left or right. But when we go above the circumstances, now we have a different perspective. Now we can see where we are and we can see where the exit is. So the great secret of uh, succeeding in life and getting out of the maze it's to elevate ourselves to a higher place. And this takes us to point two. To understand that God commands blessing in a place. In a place. Now, on verse 3 of Psalm 133, it says, Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has commanded His blessing, even life everlasting. I want to emphasize this, uh, this word, and there, and there. Uh, there refers to a physical place. And uh, the translation of there in the dictionary is simply at or in that place. And when we study the Bible, we can read commentaries, and I was reading a commentary saying that there refers to Mount Zion. And uh, they stretch things a little bit and they say Mount Zion is the church. Well, Jewish people will argue with that. I can tell you. <laughs> but um, let me tell you what I really see in this verse. Because we can read all the commentaries, they give, but we need to interpret Scripture through Scripture. And it's not talking about Mount Zion. This psalm is talking about unity. It's talking about the unity among brethren. It's talking about a place of harmony. And I really am 100% convinced, convinced that it's not talking there about Mount Zion, but there it's the place in our lives where we learn to live in harmony. And there's philosophies and religions that try to teach us this. There's one very successful today, it's called yoga. Yoga is a religion. And you may say, no, it's a physical exercise. No, it's a religion. If you do yoga, if you do just as physical exercise, that's fine. But eventually, if you want to progress in yoga, you end up with a, a philosophy, which is an oriental philosophy, and a religion, Buddhism. So I'm sorry to disappoint you. If you do yoga, that's what you're doing. You you practice another religion. <laughs> you're looking at me funny. <laughs> So I didn't came here to hear these things, just preach the word, that's what I know. 
I'm not saying you to quit yoga, so maybe some classes that will not go that far and it's just to stretch your body. That's okay, that's fine. When you're in the level of stretching your body and doing all that, that's fine. When you get to the point in which they say you need to be in harmony with the world and you need to empty yourself in order to be in harmony with the world, now you're starting to get into the yoga religion. Is that wrong? Not really. It's what the word, the word of God teaches. The Word of God here in Psalm 133 is teaching you the same principle. When you're in harmony with God, but it's not with God here, it's with others, now you're getting to a place where God says, there I will bless you and I'll command life, and I'll say even life everlasting. Amen. So even foreign religions have little pieces of the truth. Otherwise, people wouldn't believe in those religions. There's pieces of the truth in, uh, in Islam. There's pieces of the truth in Buddhism and Confucianism. And all those religions, they have little pieces of the truth. But let me tell you that the Bible, the Word of God, has the whole truth. Yes. And we need to trust the Word of God. So I'm not telling you to quit your yoga classes. I'm just telling you to apply the good principles that maybe they're there in the world. But apply them in a godly way. Try to live in harmony. Peace is so, is so important. That's why Jesus said that the, the peacemakers are blessed. So when the Bible is talking about there, or sorry, about there, it's simply a spiritual place. And when we arrive to a spiritual place and we learn to live in harmony, God says, now, there, I'll command blessing. So, are we there yet? That's the question. How can we move to the place of blessing? And this takes me to the last point of the message this morning. My final point. Because if we don't uh, live under God's blessing, if we don't feel we're there yet, the Bible is a very practical book with advice from God, from God Almighty, on how to get to the place of blessing. How can I move to the place of the blessing? Now soon we'll have winter coming, and I love winter, I prefer summer. <laughs> and if I have to take a bus from here to go home, I hope the bus stop has one of those nice glass protection places. Because I'm telling you, when a storm comes, doesn't matter what people say, Inside those bus stops, it's the place of blessing. <laughs> you might feel that it's freezing, but you look through the window and you say, Poor lady over there, poor man over there, at least I have some protection here. Listen, in the world, when we have God's blessing over our life, there's all sorts of things happening around us, but we see through our faith, and we say, poor man, he has a disease, but he doesn't have God. He has no hope. He's out there in the storm. So as Christians, we need to go and bring them to the bus stop. Amen. Bring them to the place of safety. Move them from the place of storm into the place of blessing. Amen. How can we do this? Very simply, the place in our lives where He causes His name to be remembered becomes a place of blessing. Let me read this scripture in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 24. And this is a very important chapter. It's the chapter where you can read about the Ten Commandments. So it says in Exodus 20, 24, In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. Wow, I, I, I want this blessing. God says He will come to me. Now, usually I go to Him. But here's a promise that God says, I will come to you. That's unbelievable. You know, the Creator of all things. He created the universe, the galaxies, everything we see, life. And the Creator, the Almighty God, He says, I will come to you. Where? To the place. Where? I cause my name to be remembered. So, the initiative belongs to God. It's not to us. It's not the place where we cause His name to be remembered. It's the place where He causes His name to be remembered. How does He do that? 
Listen, it's when you have an evil situation or circumstance in your life, but you decide to trust God instead of giving years to the prophets doomed. You know, there's always people that see doom everywhere. Even in the church. There's even people that say, oh, when is this church going to close? <laughs> Why, do you want it to close? <laughs> I don't think so. There's people that see things like this. Don't see through those eyes. Change to the place of blessing. Amen. Come out of the woods and out of the storm into that safety where you're still in the world, but the storm is around you, but at least you have some protection. Amen. This is the place where God causes His name to be remembered. When you have an evil situation coming to your life, but you say, I will trust my God. Amen. When you pray to God, when you humble yourself, when you say, Lord, I don't know what to do, but you know what's best for me. Amen. You know what He does? He causes His name to be remembered. Amen. Because of $10 you gave, and the Lord gave you 10 times more. A hundred. You know, I want a hundred times more. I want a thousand. <laughs> That's the promise of God. That's the promise of God. It's in the place where you have something that's causing you discomfort. You have this growth that nobody sees. It's under the, you know, the, the turtleneck or under the shirt. But you say, I'm going to trust that word. And someone in authority speaks a word of healing. And you say, that's for me. I'm the one who has the growth. Amen. Let it cry. I receive it. You see? And now there's a testimonial. This is the place where we cause God's name to be remembered. Because first He came. He has the initiative. And when we receive that blessing, then God says, I will come and I will bless you. Number two, uh, learn to elevate yourself. And I already mentioned this, but I want to read the scripture in Ephesians 1.3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Amen. Where are the spiritual blessings? In the heavenly places. And you might say, oh, so that's far. No, it isn't. As far as I'm concerned, I'm already in the, in the heavenly places. You see? Because I might be in the world, but I'm at that bus stop. It's a heavenly place. I'm there. Everybody is freezing. I'm freezing too. But at least I know I'm in a heavenly place. And listen, when we know where we are and who we are in Christ, that makes the whole difference. And God says, I've already blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Where are those blessings? In the heavenly places. So where do I need to go? To the heavenly place. That's easy. So you can make the choice of living in the world, just mingling and mixing with other people in the world, or you can raise above the circumstances. The Bible says that there's a place in Christ where we're seated with Him. In the heavenly places. God said, I have prepared a place for you at my right hand. Not only to Jesus, but to us, the church. So we should elevate ourselves and go to this place of blessing. And if God is in the heavenly places, there's a way to get there. I should discipline my thoughts, my prayer life. I should read God's word and align my life with God's word, not with religion. The religion, it's an awful thing, I'm sorry to tell you. It's awful. It's awful. Only the ones that have a religion think it, it's a great thing. But God has not the same idea. God has a different idea. God's idea is not a religion, it's a relationship. It's very, very different. Because a religion, it's a set of rules. You better talk to the Lord. A religion is a set of rules. Rules are great. They're good. But that's not God's intention. So we need to align ourselves with God. We need to rise above the problems. And, and confess God will keep me from falling. And you know what? The way up is down. The way up is down. God says, humble yourself and I will raise you up. 
So the way up in the spirit is when we humble ourselves. And the attitude of our heart is the only way that we can please God. So we need to cultivate also our soul. Think about this. Your mind is like a garden. And I have experience of not keeping good care of my garden sometimes. And certain times I will look at my lawn and I, and I, I think, well, there's nothing much I can do. Maybe I should hire someone to, to do a nice garden like brother John Hafford and others. Oh, what a nice garden you have, brother. It's the nicest that I've seen so far. If there's anyone here that has a nice garden, invite me to, to go and check it out. <laughs> I love nice gardens. But in order to have a nice garden, in order to be perfect without weeds, it takes a lot of work and effort. It's not something automatic. It's not like my computer. I put nice gardens in my computer all the time as a background. I do two clicks and it's done. But it's not that in real life. In real life, we need to work a lot. We need to pull the weeds. We need to make sure that everything is growing according to purpose. We need certain order, certain discipline. That's our mind. Our mind is like a garden. God's Word, it's the seed. So we need to have these seeds of God's Word. When we come to church, right now you're receiving a seed. You might receive it or reject it. You might say, well, this was really nice, but let me get along with my life. Or you might say, hmm, I can probably change certain things in my life and arrive to the place of blessing. Let me try this. Let me apply this. And when you receive the Word of God, then there's seed in your heart. See, when you leave the church, you can decide to receive the seed or reject it. You can decide to say, this was a good word. I need to apply these principles in my life. Or you can decide to ask the church and just think about something else. You know, say, oh, I, I like the, you know, the, the ceremony for the, 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 the Remembrance Day a little bit different. And, uh, you know, I prefer the pastor without a tie. And uh, I really don't appreciate you know, certain things that happen in the church, and you leave the church with this attitude, guess what? Your garden, instead of receiving God's Word, is receiving the weeds that come out of your personality, of your attitudes, of your own heart. It takes us to make a decision, and God instructs us to meditate on His Word day and night, so we can renew our mind. In conclusion, it's very important that we find the place of blessing. Blessing comes in a place. And it can be also a natural place. Deuteronomy 28 8, it says, The Lord will command the blessing on you and your barns, and in all that you undertake, and He will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. He will bless you where? In the land where He intends you to be. Listen, in the Spirit, certain times, God will guide us to a church that is not even our idea of the best church. But God led us there. For seasons in my life when I was not pastoring, I clearly remember being in churches. There were big churches. But it wasn't the kind of church that I wanted to be. There were too many, you know, Pentecostal hoofs <laughs> and uh, too many hymns for my personal taste and flavor. But the Lord commanded me to be there. And I said, Lord, this is not my cup of tea. Can I go somewhere else? He said, no, this is where I want you to be. So I stayed. And where I stayed, I learned. You know, to praise the Lord doesn't matter with what kind of song. Pray with doesn't matter what kind of people that pray around me. I've learned that my place of blessing doesn't depend on the church, but depends on God Himself. Amen. The church is where He blessed me. And if I'm in the place where He planted me, I'm automatically blessed. 
If I'm out of place, then I need to pray and ask the Lord and say, God, take me to the place of blessing. Because He promised that He will bless you and bless your barns. I don't have a barn. <laughs> but I have a CIBC bank account. <laughs> I wish it, it would be even more blessed than what it is now. But, you know, certain times I'm not feeling that blessing. So if I'm not feeling that blessing, I don't blame God. I don't blame circumstances. I don't blame churches. I don't blame anyone. I start by blaming myself. And when I start by blaming myself, then I have a conversation with God. And certain times God says, it's time for you to move on to the place of blessing. And the place of blessing is the most important thing that we can have in our, li in our lives here on earth. When we'll be in heaven with God, we'll be automatically in the place of blessing. So certain times, we might be thinking, I'm going to the wrong church. Have you been in the wrong church? Hmm? Or, who are the people I get along with? I not, I, 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 sometimes I like some people, but they're the wrong people. Since I was a kid, that I had a tendency to get along with the wrong people. It's true. And then I got into trouble. So then when I started to walk with God, this was 26, almost 27 years ago, I learned how to separate myself from the wrong people. And when I started going to church, I thought, well, this is the right people. And I thought everybody was holy. And a few years later, I was mad because I realized that they were not that holy. <laughs> I was so sad. And then I, I had to learn that even in a godly place, even in a house of worship, even in a church, I had to make choices. And I don't want to get uh, to the place where I'm having the wrong people. Sometimes we can even have the wrong God. <laughs> that something's wrong. You're in the wrong job. <laughs> so just stop for a moment today and ask God that special gift and blessing of showing you where is the right place. Let us all stand. Let's give a hand of applause to the Lord. God,